I'm Margaret Ann Windsor, and I'm going to put this tape up. I really don't know that it'll go up because my phone's been replaced and swapped and cloned. Can I say that? Telling the truth gets you in trouble. Being kidnapped gets you in trouble. Um, all I'm going to do is peek in. Dempsey Childers is the name that I have to use because I was kidnapped in 41 at age two. And uh, if you care to look, you can go back on all my videos. And I state that in the beginning, who my father and mother are and uh, about my kidnapping. So I want to put this up because uh, someone on my YouTube is response just came in and mentioned Martha Mitchell. Attorney General Mitchell, I believe, was his title back in the Nixon. Uh, all, his, all his were a bunch of crooks that was in his staff except Ron Ziegler. Let me say this. And by the way, I did work for Ron Ziegler. When the endorsement for Larry, uh, that Larry Flynn Hustler magazine published that I usually put up, uh, where I ran previously, he supported me in Congress in October of 83, and then the endorsement for the presidency in 84, uh, April issue. So people think that's a joke. It's kind of weird how suddenly, like the campaign in 83, October, where Mr. Flint flew me out there, seems uh, <laughs> a bit the same in that there were 20 jumped into that campaign that I ran in to replace Congressman Dr. Larry McDonald. And now then the presidency, you've got all these newbies and wannabes that are going to fix everything that can't tell you a darn thing that's really going on. But they've been given all the airtime ahead, uh, you know, wonder if they would be able to tell you about my kidnapping and what really happened to my father and mother and my children and to my country and some of your own people. That's when, what did the FBI agent said they said, and he pretended to yawn uh, in Atlanta. And there were some good souls down there anyway, so I hope they're still alive or, you know. But anyway, he says, and he pretend to yawn. He said, you bore them with what you're telling. He said, it's only when they find or learn how it affects them that they care. And uh, as a whole, he was very right. Few people, uh, as long as they're living comfortable, are going to do anything. In fact, they'll do the opposite to shut me up. There's some good souls, obviously. So I'm not going to go on a, some people would say, a rant or a what? <laughs> Temper tra tantrum? <laughs> you walk in my shoes for a minute and see what kind of uh, response you give. Because you couldn't do it. Uh, where am I going with this? I want to thank this person because I think they probably get the gist of it. And it just made a response to my video. Um, I know there were a few good souls involved in it, and uh, I wanted to put this to Jack Hartsfield. An unknown hero. saved my life and Salvador Rosini Rosini the Brits Germans and some Americans granted it was hell but at least I guess I lived I don't know how much longer because my tapes are not going up anymore and I put this on YouTube just a couple of minutes ago in response to uh, this gentleman about Martha Mitchell, etc., because she does fit into it. 
the next is the Watergate. I'm going to stop here because it's, I've lived in fear all my life. Um, and J Jack, when he was living out in um, Los Angeles, by the way, he knew Larry Flynn. Larry Flynn had been shot by a program shooter, which was part of what I was writing about in the book. And uh, he tried to tell all this stuff, or not all this, but some of it, and he knew much more, I'm sure. He was FBI, but he worked undercover as a reporter, Los Alamos, Huntsville Times, uh, New Mexican News, etc. Anyway, <clears throat> he told me that uh, he saw Mr. Flynn on occasion, and then he ended up living next door to uh, my Aunt George O'Keefe's ghost ranch in Santa Fe working for the New Mexican News. And I went by and visited with him for a couple of weeks back then. I still had the car furnished by Hustler Magazine. Now, this is not going up, and I'm making it longer than I intended to. If I get this taking like two days to even get started putting one up, and I got a feeling that I don't know what happens. I want to say this, though. I've lived in fear all my life and for my children. Innocent because of who we are. Being born, kidnapped, and I was, and then I had them here. So, um, Jack, one of the last times I spoke with him on the phone from L.A., he said to me, he said, um, I have to go now. The plumbers are at the door knocking. By that he meant the water gate. The Kissingers, the Nixons. If anybody cares to look back, uh, they're the ones that were sent out to do the hits. In other words, shut you up. Thus, 18 and a half minute gap that happened way back. Henry Kissinger and was subpoenaed, and uh, the gap, the one that stood with Diana in D.C. when she's giving away gowns, auctioning off for charity. Henry Kissinger is, I don't know if his arm was around her, I had the picture, it was in a magazine. Or shaking her hands, I can't remember. I do remember he said that he thought she should be queen. Uh, he's on the Watergate tapes ordering the death of the real queen of England. Thus the gap, thus the shutdown of the Watergate hearings. Henry Kissinger said to her, they were buddies, all right. She's illegal. People love her like... She's this nice person. She's the same garbage dump that's up there now. Illegal Elizabeth and company. All of money-hungry bastards. Can I say that? By God, I've been called every name in the book for telling the truth and live in fear that they're going to knock at my door any minute. Uh, but anyway, here's Henry Kissinger speaking, the words of a true psychopath. He tells her he wish he uh, thought she should be queen. He said, after all, I don't know if he said after all. You can I found where he said it to make sure it wasn't just this article that his ultimate aphrodisiac pleasure, etc., cetera, etc., cetera, was money and control. There you go, the new world order. <laughs>